we're getting to that time of the year here in Texas where not having air conditioning in your truck is uh, life threatening. So today I'm going to be changing the air compressor in my truck, which is CIS. What I'm going to be using for this job is an AC compressor, three cans of Freon, pack oil, expansion valve, seals and rings, this second filter that goes in the condenser, AC belt and safety glasses. I'm going to start with the easy part, which is replacing the expansion valve. And the expansion valve is right here. This one. This is the low pressure pipe, high pressure pipe. And I'm going to use a 30 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. And even though I have evacuated the system from Freon, there may be a little bit still in here. Get this out of the way. This one, I guess, is just pulling back. Yep. So, in order to get the expansion valve out, I'm going to be losing at least two top 25 bolts. Oh man, this is tight. Oh wow. I bend the tape. Look at this. It's all twisted. Oh boy, I'm sweating. I'm sweating bullets trying to get this loose. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh yes, much better now. I thought I would break it. I bend the torque tape trying to get them loose. Unbelievable. If everything is right. I should just pull this out. There we go. Yeah, the bolts look a little bit dry and rusted. This is the old one, this is the new one. And the new expansion valve came with this stud, so I'm not going to be using this one. And this is a 5mm socket. So looking at the expansion valve, there are two seals here and two in the back. So if I look inside the, uh, this connection, I can see the seals right there. So I'm gonna remove them and replace it with new ones. So I'm gonna be using a pick to pull them out. He's coming. One. Before mounting these seals, they need to be mm, lubricated with pack oil. So I'm going to just put a little bit of pack oil here so I can get them properly lubricated. And one seal is in. And the second one, so two new seals. And before I mount the expansion valve, uh, the new expansion valve, I'm going to dip the tip of the bolts that were super tight into anti seize just uh, to avoid them to get stuck. Hopefully, I don't need to get them out ever. All right, let's get the new expansion valve in. I'm going to tighten this up without going too crazy. So this is the the other side of the uh, hoses that I need to undo. So I have put a socket on the bolt that I'm going to remove next so you know exactly which one is. And to remove that nut, I'm going to be using one of the swivel sockets just uh, to help me out. There's no way to get a good grip of this. Oh God. Is this moving? Oh yeah. Slowly, slowly wasn't that hard but definitely you're gonna need a swivel like this so 
So in order to have a little bit more space to work in the compressor from the top, I'm going to remove the uh, air box. Oh yeah, a lot more space. So the throttle is uh, protected and now there's a lot more ass access to work in here from the top. So next step is going to be undo this uh, connector. So I always struggle removing this connector. This one I just find out that the way to get it out is pushing from the top in that direction. So press in, I use a screwdriver, push in and then back. So that was for this connector. Now I'm going to remove the one in the back. It's here at the very back, but it is connected right here. So now the compressor is all loose. I just need to get these two bolts and uh, just take it out. And now this one can come out as well. Low pressure hose. All right, the compressor doesn't have anything connected to it anymore. So I'm going to do this uh, nut right there and uh, this one over here. And that should get the compressor loose. This is the only one now holding the compressor. There we go. No. Well, what I want to try to do in order to remove the compressor is get this start out, which seems to be pretty long. I'm going to get it out and uh, see what happens. And this is a five millimeter start. So at this point, the compressor should be falling by itself. All right, this is just wiggle it, wiggle it until it comes down. And now, let's see if there is room enough from here. Here it is. God. Listen to this. It doesn't sound good. Well, this is definitely broken. So I just opened the compressor and found there has been some damage over here. This piece is broken. It's uh, right here. And I believe everything I started with this one getting loose. But you can see here how the compressor works. It's kind of like a swash plate system that oscillate. So let's take it apart and see this side inside here. I was trying to see if both compressors are the same, but I already found the difference. So if you see this compressor, the old one has this uh, protruding over here. This one has it in the outside, meaning that the distance here is much smaller than here. What does it mean? No idea. So I just came back from O'Reilly's. Uh, I was asking about that problem and this is what they told me. This is just to have more clearance to mount the compressor, but when this bolt starts to get tight, it will drive this spacer in. So uh, this is correct, apparently. So I've been reading that this compressor should take around four ounces of pack, pack oil. However, I see that this one already has uh, some oil inside, so I'm going to try to get it out to see how much. I always can put it back in. So it actually was four ounces here. Well, I'm going to put these four ounces back in. I'm going to put the filling plug back on. Just a bit of pack oil to get all the seals lubricated. And before I just start putting things together, I'm going to be changing all these O-rings and gasket and put in the one. One. 
now hopefully that spacer should start closing up the gap which is moving yep absolutely the spacer right there is getting pulled in pretty much all the way already maybe more and there it is before I continue, I'm going to blow these uh, holes and see if there is any debris. I'm going to put a rag over here to catch anything that may come out. Hopefully there is no nothing. Let me see. No, nope, very clean. Not a lot of space though. All right, out. And now that the plate is removed, I'm going to remove also those uh, plastic or rubber covers, rubber caps. Alright, now that everything is tightening up down there, I'm going to connect the, uh, the two hoses, like high pressure and low pressure, into the expansion valve. So the expansion valve is replaced and everything is connected. And down here in the compressor side, compressor is installed, everything is connected and the compressor belt is installed as well. So you can see in one of my videos how to change that belt. Well, I'm going to check now that everything is connected if uh, the system can hold vacuum. So I'm going to connect the, uh, the manifold to the high pressure, low pressure, pull vacuum for 20 minutes and then see if it actually can hold the vacuum. That means that everything is working correctly. Now, so that doesn't mean that the job is finished yet. I still need, need to install the uh, a desiccant on the uh, mm, condenser, which is right here. But at least what I've done so far, I want to make sure that everything is connected correctly. Let's go. So I'm going to wait half an hour, see if the system holds vacuum. And I'm going to go get a coffee. It's been five hours and I still need to remove the uh, condenser. So it's a long job system is holding vacuum so everything is tight. So in order to install the desiccant and the filter in the condenser I need to remove the condenser which is right here. I have a video how to do that so I'm going to skip that part. The desiccant and the filter are located down here but I cannot get it open. Since I changed the condenser last year I will assume that the desiccant and the filter are both in good shape so I'm going to install the condenser back on the engine. So I have uh, closed everything, everything is connected. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is uh, pulling vacuum for 40 minutes before I add the freon. That's just to make sure that there is no moisture remaining in the circuit. So I have already a can of freon connected. Everything is vacuum except for this hose, which I'm gonna bleed because there is right now air inside. And I want the freon to go all the way from this point to this point. All right, now we have free on all the way. In order to do this operation, the charging operation, the engine has to be running. So as soon as I open these valves, uh, the uh, gas is gonna go into the system. And the, when the low pressure system detects that there is gas, it's gonna kick in the compressor and just recirculate the gas through the system. And I'm gonna be using 29 ounces of Freon uh, 134A. So I have three cans. These two go completely, and this one I get only five in. The AC is on. I'm going to start opening slowly. Now the can is getting cold. So I already put two cans. This is the third one. I'm going to use only half. And this is how the pressure is looking so far. 50 PSI in the low pressure side. 
200 psi in the high pressure side. So this can weight is already half, so that's going to be the 29 ounces in the system. So I'm going to just uh, stop the charge right now at this point. And this is it, running strong. It feels so good having AC again. I hope this video helped you deciding fixing the AC in your truck by yourself instead of bringing it to a shop, which is very expensive. $2,700 was what I was quoted for this job. I spent in part uh, $450. It's not such a big deal, not very difficult, and you can always uh, replace the compressor by yourself and bring it to a shop to get a charge with Freon. I hope you find this video useful and thank you for watching. You got the pistons. Pretty cool system. By spinning the pistons should go back and forth. And I also can see there is some rust over here. That is no, not a good sign. This is actually super lightweight. Check this out. This one is already scored. And the cylinder bore side, although it look not too good, is actually smooth. You can't feel anything with the nail. So for 10 years of use, I think it's okay. All right. Back to work.